last guest created one of the most successful girl group of all time, Destiny's Child. His daughter, Beyonce, and also Solange are Grammy award-winning music superstars. He's got a new book, it's called Racism from the Eyes of a Child. Please welcome for the first time to our show, Dr. Yes, Dr. Matthew Knowles. What's up? Yeah. All right. I like a hug. Have a seat. Thank no. you. Yeah, yeah, sit there. All right. Yes. Um, hello. Hello. It's about time. I know. You know, you don't remember 1998 in Miami. Okay. And the girls were there and they were just kind of breaking. And you were getting interviews. And I remember our publicists say, you know, that young lady is wanting to get an interview and nobody will allow her to get interviews. I don't know if you remember this. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's tough being Wendy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Sometimes I said, people get Certainly scared. Certainly we're going to give her an interview. And I, I don't know if you remember this. I said, Wendy, one day I'm going to ask you for a favor. And here I am. Oh, see? <laughs> see? So I want to give you some Matthew Knowles shoe cam. You put your feet on those feet and model them right there. You know, Matthew, I have to say, in person, you are everything I thought you'd be. A cat daddy, right? Yeah! You're a nice looking man. Well, thank you. Yeah, so um, Beyonce and Solange are musical superstars. Yeah. Are you? Can I get comfortable? Yes. Yeah, I've got long legs, I don't know if Me this too, no, go ahead. I, I uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see there? Don't That's crush okay. the family jewels. <laughs> <laughs> just, just... That's right. I'll just sit like this. Okay, okay. Uh, they're musical superstars, though. <laughs> um, Everybody's excited. Are you in awe of your girls when you sit back? You know, are you in awe? Well, you know, for years I played a dual role as manager and as father. Yes. Uh, today I play the role, I don't play the role, I actually live the role 100% as their father. Nice. And. I'm extremely proud of them. Yes. Not, not what, just what they've done professionally, but how they've lived their life off the stage and they, been role models very, for Very quiet, very right. private, never anything seedy. But you're the same man who taught Beyonce and the girls how to run in heels. It's kind Brilliant. of difficult, isn't it? Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> and, and all the things, all of the curtsying, all the, you know, all the mannerisms, everything that it would take a young lady to blossom into becoming Beyonce. Did you know, <laughs> did you know while um, you went through several incarnations, Farrah and the other girls, you know, being in the, in the group, did you know that you would always want your daughter to be the breakout star? No, not really. Lies you tell. No, 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 no. Nope. No. You gotta remember that we, I actually came up with this strategy. Okay. That the last three albums, and the, the ladies bought into it, obviously mm -hmm. they had to buy into it, but the last three albums of Destiny's Child, each one of the ladies had solo projects. Uh -huh. So they had two. Uh, Michelle has had three number one albums. Three consistent. Bless her heart. Number one albums. Good for her. And you can do no better than number one, yes, right? Yes, yes. In the gospel genre. In the gospel genre. Uh -huh. That's that's her, and, her belief. And Kelly and, and Beyonce are still very close. They're extremely close. Kelly sold four or five million records outside of America because she's done quite well outside. It's the 20th anniversary of Destiny's Child ever being invented. The, their first album came out 20 years ago. I can't believe it's been that long. How? Um, I can't either. I, 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 right? Yeah. Um, do you think that they'll ever get back together? Well, I'm hopeful that they will. I, 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 I think we all would like that, right? Okay. I'm gonna tell you when it's going to happen. You mark my words. It's not gonna happen at Coachella. You know, it's not gonna happen at Coachella. Save your time. It's going to happen when Beyonce and Jay-Z are on the road. Because people really wanna see Beyonce. A lot of people are, eh, regarding Jay-Z. A lot of people also feel that they're, all they're gonna get is the On The Run tour remixed and repackaged and, you know, for a lot of money for the tickets, Matthew. The only way they could really twist it and make it interesting and you say <clears throat> is to reunite Destiny's Child. Mark my words, that's all. Yeah, I don't think so. You I don't know? think so. 
Do you talk to Beyonce about things like this? Well, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I, we don't talk about that, but I still manage every day, work day, I have to do something licensed Destiny's Child music around the world or something. Because uh, you own all, all the well, Destiny's Child Well, I'm still their manager, and as a manager, oh. I have to approve all of these things. Oh. Uh, and, and so I would know, though, if they were going to get together. I don't want, I hope they don't just get together and do two or three songs. I want them to do a, a complete tour together. Yeah. Um, so what if they all of a sudden hopped up on stage during the On The Run tour and just started singing? As a manager, what are you going to do? Swoop in? I think they're on the run. On the run, on the run. <laughs> That's smart, so you own... Now, do you and Tina own it split? Because she worked hard on the clothing and the hair and you worked hard on the discipline and the other things. You had a very good job, from what I understand, um, as a techie, and you left your job to be full-time devotion to these girls and what could be. What a gamble. Well, if you're gonna be committed, you have to be 100%. You know that better than anyone. Yeah. Does Tina own part also? Of uh, the name, trademark? Yeah. No. No. That's all you. So you're still getting paid. I still work. Yes, you do. <laughs> How old are you, by the way? 66 years old. 66. Wait, you're, wait, you're I have afraid. to ask you this. So did your makeup person do a good job? Am I oily today? No, you're not oily. <laughs> No, you, no, you're not. No, let me see. Oh, let me please. Look, let me look. Don't hang me out to oil. Okay. You know the picture that we show of Matthew, and, and Matthew, you're always in need of some press powder, but no, not today. <laughs> Good. And, and by the way, <laughs> and, and by the way, in case you didn't tell, in case you couldn't tell, this show is done with a bit of seriousness, but a whole lot of tongue in cheek. But also a whole lot of love from your staff. That, thank you, and thank you, thank you. And, and, and my co host. And, um, but you're the one who reached out to us calling the Bureau, trying to set things straight. So now Norman's got the first line to Matthew and Matthew's got a first line to Norman in the Bureau. So we consider you an offshoot of the show. Well, good. So if you see something, say something. All right. All right. So Matthew's got Beyonce and Solange, but he's also got four grandchildren. Wow. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's Jules. And who's the other one? Oh, that's Solange. Looking just like Jules, okay? <laughs> and then there's um, um, Blue Ivy, mm -hmm. and then Beyonce's got the twins, so you got four grandchildren. What's your relationship like with the grandchildren, Matthew? Well, you know, I've spent four or five times with them. You know, I live in Houston. Um, Beyonce is in jail living mainly a lot in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and sometimes here. Mm -hmm. uh, when I get a chance, I get a chance to meet them here. But I always say, uh, even with Beyonce and, and Solange, when you're three years and younger, uh -huh. like, uh, I want you to talk when I say hello. I like to hear you say hi back. Uh, so, so I can't wait till they get to that age that uh, we can hang out. A lot of people out. do feel that way, but they're too embarrassed to admit it. I appreciate your honesty. So you have a better relationship with Jewel because Jewel does stuff. Well, Jules is a basketball. Jewel. He's a b-baller. Uh -huh. uh, and I played high school and college ball, and, mm. and I, we get to talk about basketball. He's a teenager, believe it or not. Now he's 13 years old. Really? And so he's going through the Gosh. transition that 13-year-old boys go. Yeah. And I love this man and will spend more time with him because uh, he's a great kid. Yeah, yeah. And now, when the twins were born, when Beyonce gave birth to the twins, it was, it was Matthew who put it out, or excuse me, yes, Matthew put it out there before anybody else did, including the family. Yeah, yeah. Was I, she I, pissed? I, I have to say, I was, uh, I, I, I'll never forget this. I was on my way to the airport. Uh -huh. I think it was one of those Saturday good morning shows. Uh -huh. And I uh, thought the so scroll said, Beyonce has announced, and I was just rushing. And when I got to the airport, uh -huh. I just wanted to congratulate her because uh -huh. I thought she had told the world because I knew and a lot of people knew and uh -huh. close to the family. It was a mistake that I made. Uh, oh. And I can own that. That was a, a mistake. I but your mistakes are our game because we talked about it before she even announced it. Yeah, Thank well, you. <laughs> you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens. It, look, Matthew, it does happen. Yeah. Um, Beyonce's a very, very private person, though. Uh, when you saw Beyonce, Solange, and Jay-Z, and, and the security in the elevator uh, thumping, what was your reaction to that? I, I have to tell you, I laughed so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Be, I laughed so hard because, you know, if you know Solange, that's Solange. That's Solange. <laughs> 
You just never know a what you're gonna cracker. get. Firecracker. Don't know where she get that from. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I, then Beyonce would be in the corner, quiet, just kind of like, when y'all finish, let me know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I just laughed. Laughed. Next, we've got more with Matthew Knowles. Keep it here. We're back with Matthew Knowles. So Matthew, everybody, is married. Married. You've been married for a few years now, huh? Uh, most people don't even know I'm, I've been married. It'll be five years in a few months. Well, this is why you're here. It's yeah. show business. So you've got to show your business. So you have five years now. Do you have children with your, with your wife? No, no. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations on the new book. I thought it would be something regarding Destiny's Child. But instead of writing that book, you wrote a book that's actually quite interesting. Racism from the eyes of a child. Tell us about the book and your humble beginnings in Alabama and what brought you here now. Yeah, well, you know, I grew up in Gaston, Alabama. I was born in 1952 uh, in a little small town of 25,000 people in Gaston. Um, it was an era of racism and segregation. George Wallace was our governor. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about our family history, our heritage. Were you raised by mom and dad? I was. Okay. I was raised, raised by my mo and, mother and father. And why did they pick you to be one of the bus students? Because you were bussed in? To... Well, they had freedom of choice. It okay. was one of the new laws that they had just in 19... Uh, uh, 50, 56, I think it was, uh, that freedom of choice came about. And so parents could decide where they wanted their kids to go. Uh, the unwritten rule was, okay, if you send your, your, your kid over to the white school, we're not going to protect you. Uh, did so, you get beat up? Yes, I did. Oh. I got a lot of demonstrations we did during that era. Uh, and I hear that you also went to... Uh, uh, yeah, experience some majority, of that. at the time, Ocean Township High School was majority white. And, yeah. uh, you know, I experienced things, but nothing like being hosed down. Yeah, I mean, it was tough. And in the, in the, yeah. we're talking in the early 60s. Yeah. Uh, it was very difficult. Uh, and as a result, I heard through the book that your own mother said to you, don't bring home any dark-skinned girls. She did, and, and that was wrong. It was wrong. the era of the time. It, that was wrong, and, but she did a lot of great things, but that one was wrong, and I internalized that as a kid. You know, what we hear as children, we sometimes internalize that, and it affects us in our adult life. And so then there, you chose Tina. I chose Tina. Yeah. Is your wife now, is she light-skinned, dark-skinned, or in-between? She's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to digging, we'll, we'll find out. How about that? Uh, one thing that sparked a lot of conversation here at Wendy. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that sparked a lot of conversation here is, at Wendy is that you said, Matthew, something to the effect of if Beyonce, uh, Beyonce wouldn't be successful if she was dark skinned. No, I never said that. Okay, clarify. Look in the book, I don't even say Beyonce's name. What I said was, is that in pop radio, and that's, you know this, there's different types of radio. Mm -hmm. There's urban radio, adult contemporary, but pop radio, specifically <laughs> pop radio. Side by side with Taylor Swift. That mm -hmm. if you look over the last history of years, mm -hmm. and I had my students at Texas Southern to research this, mm -hmm. that... Where he's a professor, by the way. For eight years, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, that, that you would see that those black females that are at pop radio of a lighter complexion. That's a fact. That's, that's, you can't go past that at all. Do you all. feel as though it's still going on now? It is, yes. To the point where girls are bleaching their skin and, you know, changing the color of their eyes and things like that? Well, all around the world, that, that's happening, not just in America. Yeah. It still happens. It's unfortunate. Did you encourage Beyonce to stay out of the sun while the other girls in the group darkened up so that Beyonce could be the lightest one? Well, we're actually waiting for you to be the fourth member. Oh. I would, but I can't dance. I'm not good in heels. Well, we can work on that. <laughs> I'm comfortable right here on the couch talking to you. <laughs> so it's been 31 years since you and, or 31 years of great times together, you and Tina, um, but then you got divorced. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your relationship with Beyonce and Solange? Well, it becomes difficult when you're a family that's been together that long. Mm -hmm. No, but fortunately, Beyonce and, and Solange they were adults. They yeah. weren't kids. You know, it affects kids differently. Solange is married. Beyonce's and married. Yeah, they, they have their own families. Yeah. They're working on all yeah. that. Uh, so it was, it was all, they, they're, they're ladies. They're yes. women. So it's dad and mom, and that's difficult. But 
you know, I have to say, Tina is my friend. Nice. She's my friend. And her new husband is hot, well, like you. But I'm known, She knows how to pick him. But I, I knew Richard before Tina knew Richard. Oh. So I've known Richard for a, a while. I, his wow. sister was a good friend of mine. So, wow. You know, she's deceased now, but. Oh. Yeah. I liked meeting you. Why? Because. Why? Because I do. Do people so recognize you? So you invite me a, a back again? Call the bureau and book yourself. You know our number. <laughs> <laughs> Do people recognize you all the time? You know what they say is, wow, I didn't know you looked like that. I didn't know you were tall. I didn't know you were that handsome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up, everybody, for Matthew Knowles. His book is called Racism, From the Eyes of a Child. It's in stores now. Everyone in the studio audience is going home with their copy.